everybody. Welcome back to my channel, Made with Love. My name is Heather. And so I'm just going to move this out of my way for a second. So what I have for today is I've seen people do where they take new pieces like these pine or boss, uh, basa wood, balsa, whatever it's called. These like little um, boxes here and they age them doing a couple things. One is with the uh, solution of uh, brown paint and water to kind of make like a, a makeshift stain. Another one is to paint them with rust. So yesterday morning, uh, about before 10 in the morning, I grabbed my cleaning vinegar. It has to be the cleaning vinegar because it's stronger. Um, this one I buy from the Dollar Tree. So $1.25 and I get 64 ounces or 1,892 mils, which is like a really good price for like a buck 25 for that amount of cleaning vinegar. This stuff works good cleaning lots of things. It actually, if you're cleaning your mirrors and glass and stuff, the cleaning vinegar is better than just the regular white vinegar. White vinegar works too, but the cleaning vinegar is stronger, more, I guess it's more acidic, I guess. I'm not quite sure. I'd have to figure out why it works better. So what I have is I got this chunk of the steel wool from the garage. I have to put that back. It's my husband's little thing. So I put in here just, you know, this little jar. So I just pour just enough vinegar up to like the top, just right before it hits the label. And I've been swirling, swirling it around. And I started with a chunk of the steel wool that already had some rust. Because one of the techniques to age something was to make, just to paint it with rust. And then, I just thought it was so funny, but I could not find any rusted nails or screws, but I did find a couple rusted things. I found a couple nails, and I also found a rusted binder clip, and I found a broken, rusted wire clippers. So I've got some other color of rust in here, so it's the same thing. It was just the cleaning vinegar, I just poured it up to here, so it's not a lot, like less than a quarter cup in both of these. I mean, I could always measure and let you know how much, but you can see the size of the jar. You know, this was had the maraschino cherries in it. And this one was the salsa or I guess it was the ranch dip, but you know, like potato chip stuff. So just trying to get the rust color. So I'm just move my camera down so you can see what I'm gonna do next. So first thing first, over so they're not blocking the view is I've got to take these apart. This one has a label, this one doesn't. I'm just going to grab this tool. I don't want to wreck my acrylics, but I thought I had the other day I was I had that scraper tool. Yep, yeah, there it is. I was removing price tags the other day. So this is just one of these little tools that's from the Dollar Tree. So it just looks like that. It's just a little blade. I think anything with a have a blade just to kind of get, lift up the yeah, peels off whatever I was doing last time I forget what I was making oh the signs the, that was a little harder to get off just a little bit left there. so sometimes it's easier to get off but these little blades and eh, little blades I'm pretty sure like me an exacto knife would probably work just as easily because it's almost like an exacto knife it's just a little bit wider it's just easier to hold on to because the exacto knife you know you cut so maybe you could angle the exacto knife but this is just a larger blade okay, so I'm just gonna grab my little screwdriver set here this also came from Dollar Tree for a dollar 25 it came with six screwdrivers I only have five I don't know where the six one went I'm gonna see. I'm just gonna undo. I'm gonna take all the hinges off if I can. So I just want to get it all to look really nice and rusted, but I want to I want to age the hinges as well.
I'm going to try both techniques. So I've got two different ones here. One that actually looks like a little um, chest. And then the other one has like a little bit of like a chicken wire type finish on the top. So I just thought it'd be kind of fun to be able to do the two boxes in two different ways. And just to see which way ages things faster or better. twist the wrong don't want to twist the wrong way I don't want to break anything so there's all the hinges the so same thing I think for the hinges thing too I'm just gonna pour the cleaning vinegar in here and see what it does to these just realized I don't have any napkins or paper towel in here because I do not want to spill this cleaning vinegar solution on stuff here. So I'm just going to get these hinges out and then I'm just going to pour a little bit of the vinegar in here and let them start to do whatever it's going to do to the little brass hinges and the little nails. And then I'm just going to go and grab some paper towel just so I don't, you know, while I'm doing this, I'm not going to splash anything. So it's not going to take a lot because this is just one of those little cups, that, like, you know, fruit cup or the applesauce. I save these containers. They're really handy for crafting. Um, so just enough to cover most of the hinges. But they're really good for crafting. If you want to do, you know, big jugs of paint, you just want a little bit or just a water container. So, I'm just going to let these soak and it's already starting to do stuff to the brass. I don't know, just see. this. I don't even know if you can even tell, but some of the pieces have already started to turn a darker color. I don't know if it's the cleaning vinegar or if there was just something on them that, you know, didn't even notice. That don't want the screws to be stuck in the hinges because then it's not gonna it's not gonna have a more even finish, I don't think. I'm just gonna stir these around, make sure everything is being coated. I might even just take a chunk of the steel wool from this one kind of rusted and just put a little bit of this rusted steel wool in there just to help. Yeah, it's already changed the water quite a rusty color. It's the steel wool's already rusted. So that's just gonna really help that process a lot faster. So I'm just gonna go grab some paper towel and I will be right back. Okay, so I've got my paper towel here. So I'm just gonna lay a couple pieces down. I love these select a size kind of things. So I'm just going to I want to keep them kind of together so I know which which boxes kind of go together because the, the the holes might not line up if you put the two wrong ones together, but also the one that's got the chest top part has the little bit of the chest stuff that comes down. So for this one, what I'm going to do is I want to age this to look like an old trunk. And then I have some strips of faux leather that were left over from another project I had done about a year, almost a year ago, and it's hard to believe. Um, I recovered the inside of one of my um, serving trays with some with a faux leather placemat. So I have some strips of that left. So I thought that would look really nice on here. It's kind of like a dark uh, brown blackish color. Then on this one, I was thinking of doing something with the wire somehow aging it, but I kind of like it white because I was going to try, I was going to paint the inside black and then let the paint seep through, but I'm just going to leave it like that because I've got it. I've decided I'm going to do something a little bit different for the inside. So I don't mind. So I don't know what's going to, this is going to happen to this wire. 
So this one I'm going to use the paint technique. This one I'm going to do with the um, rust technique. This will be paint and rust. I just have to keep that to, I should say that out loud to myself so I know which technique I'm doing on which. So I'm going to start by making up this paint to make like a stain. So I'm just going to, I've never made a stain out of paint before, so this would be a first time for me. And I thought, well, why not do it on a smaller project to see if it really works rather than a bigger project that I may or may not like. So I'm just putting a little bit of paint in and I'm pouring a little bit of water. They say do about half and half. Well, I don't know if I'm going to like how it looks, so I'm not quite doing half and half. I'm kind of sticking with a little bit more paint than water, but you just got to mix this in. I've got too much water, so I got to add a little more paint to that. And these paint brushes I'm using are just some very old ones that, especially for <clears throat> excuse me, especially for this rust one, I want to use paint brushes that. I could just throw out. So this paintbrush has glue stuck in it. It's not just any glue, it's um glitter glue and paint and it was not washed. Just a little bit more paint just so I get a more of a solid color. Let's see, yeah, that looks a little bit better. It's not quite so runny, but it's still runny. This brush is not going to work because it's, it's just it's not going to be able to paint with. There, just going to soften this these brushes up. These ones here, I don't really care about. They're actually for my day home kids. So I know there's some of these were from a pile that I was actually going to just throw out. Like this one here, I can't get it. I've tried softening it. I've soaked it in everything that they say to soak them in. I've tried the paint thinner, I've tried so much, and it just still just caked in with stuff and it won't soften. So we're just gonna brush this on, going with the grain. I'm just gonna coat the whole thing. And once I, because it's not a big surface, because I know I've seen people do larger projects, and when they do this, you brush it, you put this on like a stain, and then you immediately go and wipe it off. Well, I don't have a big enough surface, so I just kind of I really want this to kind of soak in because I really want it to go look more aged. I don't think I'm going to rub any of that off. I'm just curious as to what it looks like if I were just to leave it. I'm just going to go over top of the white a bit too and just see if it will do anything. But no, I'm starting to like that. I'm not going to wipe it off. Like I said, for this one, I decided that for the inside of this one, I'm going to cover it with some um, what is it, the scrapbook paper I have that looks aged and antique looking. It, um, oh, I forget what the what the book it, what the pattern's called or what the book it's from. It's one of the ones I have. I think it's just sitting on the chair just in front of me and I just can't see it but I'm but there's this one and it's got like um, world travel pictures in it and one of them has it's like a I think it's clocks and I don't remember if it was just regular wall clocks or if it was like um what are they called pocket watches I guess I forget what it had on it, but I thought when I saw this just now, I'm like, no, I'd like to use some of those. Even on this one too, when I get this one aged, I'm going to use some scrapbook paper for it to line the inside like you would normally see an old um, trunks and stuff, how they would have them lined. I've got a couple real trunks that I have and I'm going to redo them this summer. So I think that'll be a really fun project this summer. I bought some, I actually went and I found some uh, wallpaper that's in a really vintage kind of a color. I don't know how old the wallpaper is, so it could really just be that color because it could really just be from that time. Never know. 
sun it's a perfect color and it's so close to the other one of the other trunks i have of what's what it, the other trunk i have is lined with so, so i have about three trunks that i want to redo two are blue and one was uh, painted with a thick heavy black paint so I was just trying to figure out how to get rid of that paint so I was watching tutorials on restoring trunks and so when I saw these boxes I'm like I want to try some techniques that I'd seen on the real trunks and try see if I can copy some of that on these smaller ones I didn't do the bottom, and I know I didn't do the inside of the, of the lid. That's okay. I'll get to that after, but just realize if I can just get this one. Let's get some of this color on here. I'm just going to set that aside, but I'm really liking the way it's starting to look. Kind of that old, it's not quite there yet. But I don't want to wipe it off. I'm curious what it would look like if I did wipe, wipe some of that stuff off. But I like that color. So I don't want to ruin. Like, it's one of those things. You're curious on how things are going to look. But you like the way it looks. And it's like, if I were to wipe that off, it's not going to be that color. And I like that color. So I'm just going to leave it there. I can always experiment with, you know, a different project another day. Just going to grab another paintbrush. Okay, um, maybe I'll just use this one. One that I don't really care about. And this is the. So I'm going to do the top with the one that was with the steel wool and just see. Let's get the paintbrush. Just I can't get in there. Oh, that's not a good paintbrush. I guess I'll just use this. This one I was already using. Oh. This is very runny. I'm just going to hold this up over top of the jar and just kind of put it on and just kind of let it drip. And this one I do want the vinegar to just sit on place for a few minutes and just do whatever it's going to do. I don't know what it's going to do. I'm curious. That's the other thing. It is fun to just... You know, if you have some bigger projects that you want to try, try with small scrap pieces of things just to try different techniques to see how it's going to work. If you've never done things before, like I've never aged wood. I've never had any projects where, where I've had to age wood, but I'm just always curious of how it's going to work. But I do like this. Like I have stained this type of, like the... I know I'm saying it wrong, so I'm just going to say pine. I have, because it's not pine, it's the other one that you make little mini airplanes out of. I, I, I always just say it wrong, but, so I'm just going to say pine. So I've stained pine before, I've stained craft sticks, and I've done them with coffee and tea. But to stain this wood with, like, a rust or a paint and water solution, I've never done. I can already see I've got a little cut on my finger and the vinegar just hit it. I didn't know I had it. It feels like a paper cut. I'm just going to dab this on like that. And this one, I'm just going to... I'm just going to put some on. I'm just going to let it drip down the sides see what it does but this wood just wants to soak the water in and I don't know if that's good or bad I know how much water I just put on here and I just see how fast the wood just soaked it up so I'm trying to get it to drip down the sides and it just doesn't want to it just wants to soak in I 
just kind of want like kind of like an aged antique look Same thing. I'm just going to let some of this just sit here on just random patches. Just, but I kind of already like in the way that it's, um, you can see the different, like the grains has of the wood has really come out. Like that side there just... I don't know if it shows up on the camera good, but where I'm sitting, it's just like really impressive just to watch the grain just show up. So I'm just going to keep doing this. I'm just going to do another coat of this and I'm going to let them dry and I'll be back when everything has dried. Welcome back. I have let these dry overnight. I actually did a second coat. It's a little lighter than I wanted, but that's for this one here that's just the paint and water so i'll probably do a third and fourth coat but i do like the way it's looking but i gotta find a way to age the wire as well and this one here this is just with the painted with the rust oh, things. so i just just painted with the rust and in some press these little bubble marks on it it's really interesting just the way that the water kind of bubbled Kind of really like it. it really does look aged and well worn well used again you can still see the um the grain of the wood and here's the top of it so i like the way that that just kind of got this coppery color and it's got some you can see like where some of the stuff had dripped and there's parts where it didn't get as much coverage. I like that. That looks so good. So now to do the inside, before I do the inside, I'll show this. So these were the screws and the hinges. So I put them in that cleaning vinegar with a little piece of the steel wool. I'm going to take the steel wool out just because I think they look so they're kind of soaking in here. So they're starting to like get like kind of more rusted, not so shiny. Which is what I wanted. Take one out. See, it's kind of got that, it looks all rusted and aged. So I'm just going to let these soak for a few more hours. I might just add a little bit more of the vinegar just, just to cover them because I think some of the vinegar may have evaporated. I'm just going to let these sit for a few more hours. It's just the, just the cleaning vinegar. Okay, so I took the piece of steel wool out because it's got a good enough of a rusted color now. Now for to line these, I have some of this type of scrapbook paper here. I've got the darker one and I have a lighter one. And it kind of looks like a woven basket which would look okay, but I also have this pack of paper that I got from the from Dollarama for $4. So you get uh, 50 sheets. I'm not quite sure how many designs or how many of each. It just says I get 50 sheets. I'm just going to move these boxes just... And this one had, this is this one that had this traveling one, which I thought looked, would look really good. For inside the trunk, I'd seen one of the patterns I really liked. Just gotta find it. 
See, like there's this one here, and it's just like a whole collage. Like you could cut each one of these pieces out to do something, which would be really nice on a different project. Make like mini, um, mini posters. I've seen one, the same with this, is just the postcard one. Quartz, magnifying glass, I'm trying to find, see there's the map. So I think if I were to piece part of this together, you know, to see how big this would be, to have like the inside of it with a chunk of the map. I think the other one, it's so hard to do this with these acrylics. That just looks like patterns for dressmakers. Yeah, and this one just looks like old worn leather, which would also look good. And there's another one with the, some more map and a compass. It's not quite the one I wanted. Is this the wrong case? Okay, a music sheet, um, rusted locks, what? some old trunks, the letters. Is this not the right pack? I thought I had a pack that had the clocks on it, just a whole bunch of watches. Maybe it's in one of these other packs here. Mm. Oh, that one looks neat. There, see the split lock. Or the bark. I had paper. I know I had <laughs> uh, and it was and it was just a whole bunch of stopwatches and I wanted to use that because the coloring was perfect. But now I don't see it. So There was still enough in this one that I think I found two that I'd like anyway. So I'll go back to the world map ones. Because I don't need a big piece. I just need enough just to cover the inside of the lid and inside the box. So, so that one. And I'll just do these two. This one is lighter, so I'll do this lighter one first. So the easiest way to do this is, I know the inside is smaller, but I'm just gonna measure the outside of the box. Just gotta grab my tape measure. I think, yeah, I did, it fell on the floor. measure just around here so about five and a half inches that way and seven and a half inches so five and a half by seven I'm just gonna decide where I kind of like I like this big chunk down here Seven and a half. It's actually from like this line to this line. I'm just gonna put a little dot just so I know where the. And then five and a half. Doesn't quite look right. It looks bigger that way than that way. It's got a gotta double check that I did that right. So that is oh, see, I need seven and a half. So that's not seven and a half. Okay. 
Okay, well, I'm just going to cut out this chunk here anyways. Gonna set this here. I'm just gonna make sure that it's gonna we'll cover. Yep, it's gonna cover. If it covers the outside, you know it's gonna cover the inside. But I'm just gonna make my lines like this, just so I know where the creases will be. I know it's gonna be inside, so it's gonna be about a about a quarter inch. If it's a quarter inch smaller. Trying to learn measurements. So it looks like, yeah, it's about a quarter inch smaller. I'll be back in just a few moments. Okay, sorry about that. I had to go answer my door and then just, it's a new day. <laughs> sorry. Just, uh, yesterday just went so fast. All I ever got done was just cutting out, measuring and cutting out the piece of scrapbook paper for the inside of one of the boxes. So I did a quick measure, just the outside. So it was, I think, seven and a half inches by five and a half inches. So just, I'm just gonna put this paper down, just creasing it, just so I know where the, oops, just so I know where I need to be. Now I do a lot of paper crafts, so I always like to catch the little bit bigger it's easier to trim afterwards, but I've kind of got this kind of creased here, so now I know where my creases need to be. So I'm just going to fold this just so I get a nicer, a little bit nicer box. Like I said, this is the outside, so I know it's going to fit the inside. I will have to do a little bit of trimming, but it's just, I'd rather have a little too much than not enough. If I just go like this and then open it up, we'll end up with. You know, like, like an envelope kind of a looking thing. So now we get these extra little squares here. And you could cut them off, but I'm not going to because I know my paper is the wrong size. So I'm going to flip it to the white side because uh, it's easier to see where the lines are. So all I'm going to do is where the two lines meet and I get this little square. Well, it's more like a rectangle on the size of this one. But I'm just going to cut from the corner to the from the corner to where the first two folds meet just so I kind of because I will be cut I'll probably be cutting these off but this helps when you make your box and kind of helps to make the little box when you get those extra little pieces like I said because I was doing measuring the outside it's easier than trying to measure the inside sometimes the inside is quite big and you can actually measure the inside this box is a little smaller, so I decided just to measure for the outside. And if I fold like this, then it should be able to fit in, but I know that it's going to be a little bit too big. So I'm just going to check and see. Now I'm going to try to fold this, push this in. And as I push in, you'll see that where I had them overlapping, it's going to do it from the side first. So if I go like this, see, see. So if I go like this, like this, then you get the two, these two points. So it's like you know, when you're wrapping gift wrap and stuff, it's the same kind of thing. You get a nice corner when you do it that way. And there's less to fold. Now I will be cutting those. I'm just double checking. Because I, I know I'm going to be cutting those off, but I just wanted to double check my sizing for the inside before I do any actual cutting. So I'm just going to try to push this in. It's a little tricky with my acrylics on. I'm just going to use this paintbrush just to help me get this. You know, because I got to do that, I think I'm just going to cut these little corners off anyways, because I know it's I'm going to have to anyways. And I know it's going to make the perfect box now. Yeah, so 
they have to end up running, had to go to my door. It happened to be a little day home kid. Kind of lost track of time yesterday morning. So then I, and then I never got back to finishing this up last night. So I really want to finish them all this morning. Let's see, I can tell I've got still way too much paper. Put this here. As I push it down, it's going to fit in. Well, I'm just going to quickly just stick that in the right end of my. I'm just going to measure the inside of this box just kind of quickly. So it is seven inches, and this way it's two inches. No, that's centimeters, sorry, I'm just, so it's just less than five, so it's like just a little more than four and a half, so I want it less than five, and this one I need just less than three, so I will cut this down to five and three, so five, actually just looking, I can just cut this whole extra side here off. I didn't realize I had to cut that much off. I didn't. I should have just done that yesterday. Just measured the inside. When I do that, then I'm not going to get. It. Yeah, because I knew if I did that, then I'm not going to get up the sides. But that's okay. I'll just. I'm just going to change the way I'm going to do this now. So I want to do it in one nice piece, but it's not going to happen. So I'm going to just trim a little bit off of here. A little bit off of here. Just going to straighten this one out. It's a little crooked. I'm just going to press this straight in. Because I was trying to get it where I could line the whole thing in one piece, but... I'm looking at this and it's just going to be really hard. So I'm just going to line just the bottom part like that. And then I'm just going to make the pieces with this extra strips to come up the sides. I think it's just going to be easier if I just do it in the five pieces. I was trying to do it in one piece, but I think I can just get it done in the five pieces. I'm just going to cut each strip to fit in there. how I could get some pieces in here. One more, so it's about that big. Like that, so I've got the inside of the box line. So now I'm just going to get the my Mod Podge and Mod Podge it all down. Get this out. It was right in front of me. I think I moved it yesterday. Where did I put it? Oh no, it just got covered behind some stuff. So I got my Mod Podge and a paintbrush. So I'm going to do the sides first because they're in pieces. I'm trying to do something. 
I was going to do this yesterday and I had figured out how I was going to do it and then I didn't get back to doing it and then I'm just changing how I'm doing it. So I didn't want to do it in pieces but this is just, my acrylics are making it hard for me to, to do what I wanted to do. I'm just going to put a generous amount of Mod Podge in here. Sides done, so now I'm just gonna put it in here. I'll use a this chopstick, it's a little smaller. Let's get this pushed down. I'm not too worried if it sticks out of the box at the moment. I'm just trying to get it to fit in the box. I just want to I think I messed up somewhere because now suddenly the pieces don't want to fit. I thought I had them so they it was fitting before. Something must have happened. Something must have had a bubble in it and I thought it fit. Now that I'm actually putting it together. Oops, more glue right there. Yeah, now that I'm actually putting it together, suddenly now I've got a space missing. Maybe not. It looked like there was going to be a large chunk missing, but I guess not. Okay. So we've got all four sides inside done. Now I'm going to take the Mod Podge and I'm going to put it down on the bottom. Down. I'm just going to figure out which I want as the front of the box. I want it to go this way. So I'm just using the little I'm using a paintbrush, a pen. I'm just using a little chopstick. I'm just pressing it down in place. Oops, just pressed it down in place. And now I'm just going to get the Mod Podge and I'm going to seal the rest of this down with more Mod Podge. I'm just going to go over top of the whole, all the paper. This is a really nice big generous coat of Mod Podge over the whole thing. I've never worked with these little boxes this size with the Mod Podge and paper. I've done a little bit larger, like a jewelry box sides ones, where the inside, like you know, the inside fits almost like the bottom of a, almost the whole 12 by 12. Well, I guess it'd be like an 8 by 10 size of a jewelry box. I've covered it, this stuff with one of my kids' jewelry box when they were younger. I had um, I don't remember what it was. It was. Something that they had in their jewelry box that they was something really important to them, and I don't know if it was. Uh, I think it might have been like a bottle of 
perfume or a bottle of nail polish. I can't remember now, but it leaked and it wrecked the bottom of their nice jewelry box. So I covered that. So I've not done anything smaller than that. So this is the first time I've done a really small box because I bought these boxes before, but all I ever do with them is just paint them. I've never done anything more creative. And as I'm doing this, it is bubbling up in the bottom. And sometimes that bothers me, but because I want this to look old and aged, I don't mind that it's starting to bubble. It's just the way that the paper oh, just overlapped a bit. Just wanna make sure I got all this done. The very bottom's kind of bubbled, so I'm actually just working and getting the bubbles to be more noticeable. Excuse me. Sorry about that. It's just about oh, just ease. Okay, so like I said I'm just right where it's kind of bubbling up. I'm really just trying to get that to a little bit more texture bubble look because it looks really interesting. I'm also just going to bring the paper up, the Mod Podge up, and I'm just bringing it over the edge. So I just bring some of this extra piece over this edge up here, just make it easier to remove. So I've got it all coated in the Mod Podge. I'm going to let that one dry. Now the other one, I wanted to try some other techniques that I'd seen, like I'm um, watching like kind of combination of like journaling, like junk journaling, and like making like steampunk covers, which I thought would be really cool looking. So because it has this, so where did I put it? I know I had one of those. Behind me, so I had it yesterday and it fell. So I thought it fell, and then I didn't pick it up. I just left it on the floor. Um, no, I don't see it. So I'll have to go and grab it. But for the outside of this, I wanted to kind of you know to make it look aged, and I want to do some like that steampunk thing. And one of the ones that I saw them do is they take the coffee sleeves and if you rip your coffee sleeve apart, you get that bubbly, um, the ripply um, cardboard and the tin foil. That's what I wanted to try. So I want to put some of that on the outside of this. So just give me a minute. I'm just going to go grab the little coffee sleeve. Okay, so for coffee sleeves. Uh, sometimes you have to rip them apart to get to the car corrugated, you know, this part here. These Starbuck ones, they, they're they not like a double thick one, they're just, they look like that. And also I've got a chunk of uh, tin foil. So I want to just crinkle up the tin foil. I kind of did this off camera because I didn't want it to be too loud, you know. Uh, ripping and crinkling tin foil can be really loud. So all I want to do is just want to crinkle the tin foil to get this all this um, texture in the tin foil. So I'm just gonna set the Mod Podge aside because that I'm gonna be needing in a second. Oh, there's the hinges. So they are actually going really rusty. <laughs> they really look rusted now. So I will be rinsing those off in a minute as well but if they can just we'll sit there for a little bit longer so I'm going to grab my scissors I'm just going to cut I want this to be this rough on where's the post? yeah because the outside of this box is just a plain box so I want to put some of this rough stuff on the box so I'm just going to cut chunks Cut this into strips. So I'm cut 
into smaller little chunks just so it's easier to put on. So I'm cutting them in half and then I'm cutting each of the halves into about four pieces. So out of my three coffee sleeves, I now have 16 chunks to work with because I don't want it to be uniform kind of a thing. I don't want it, I don't want everywhere to be the exact same going around. I just so that's almost the right it's almost the right thickness. So just trim a little bit of that off. Let's see. We also do have to remember where the hinges and stuff are going to be. But I kind of so get like this textured thing like that. So I'm going to glue these down, but I got to watch where my hinges are. I'm just going to take a little sharpie, actually. I'm just going to mark a little sharpie pen. Just going to mark where my screws holes would be, just so I know where I can't um, cover at the moment. So all I did was just took the black pen and I just circled where the screw holes will be. So if I do cover them, then I will have to poke them, poke the holes, but the holes don't go all the way through. So this is going to be a little tricky. So I think what I'll do is, that's a little tricky to figure that one out. So I think I'm just going to make it go like that. I'll just have my corrugated cardboard on either side of the hinge and kind of leave that section for now. As the not quite sure how far up the lock goes, but I guess I and I can just put a little chunk just above there. So I'm just gonna snip this off. have to go above here well, I think it is almost and then I see another little strip from here to here so I'm just gonna take my mod podge I'm just gonna glue these strips down around here as well just so they've got time to dry as well. I would probably use a stronger glue but I just don't have a stronger glue at the moment. So I'm just going to use the Mod Podge. And I'm not going to Mod Podge where the holes are just because I would hate to glue get stuck in there and then not being able to get the hardware put back on. A little Mod Podge on top. And now I'm going to put a strip of this tin foil. Thank you. 
take my oh, use the chopstick again and as you rub it in you'll get that the pattern of the cardboard will show up tin foil that I don't need. I'm just going to do this for all four sides going around this box here. screw holes are going to be. I think I'm going to have to actually put the hinges on now. I guess I'm going to have to put the hinges on right now because if I keep continuing I'm going to lose track of where they are. I'm just going to Taking the hinge and the two screws out of that vinegar solution, or just the vinegar. I'm gonna dry these. I don't want this. I don't want to wreck my nails. Screwdriver set. Okay, not to punch the hole in. hole punched for where this goes. Reach line this up. It's hard to put the tiny screw in with these acrylics. Get the screws in whoops, this hole first and then bring it over.
I don't understand why. <clears throat> Holes lined up with tin foil out of the way. I don't know why I just can't get the screws to go into the holes. This does not want to line up. I'm going, 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 and it's just going in circles. I don't understand what I've done wrong. Well, I'm just going to get the one screw in that was started, and I will work on that. So I'll be back when I get this on and I'm going to do the other three sides of this lid. Okay, so I finished all four sides. Got the hinges in, I got this part, this little hook part on. Then I figured out why I was having trouble. There are two different sizes of screws. So I'm trying to figure out why I could get one screw in but not the other screws because the long screws are for the uh, this part, this little front clip part, and the smaller screws are for the hinges. Didn't notice that till I you know, took it apart and I was looking at the screws, and I'm like, oh right, there's different sizes of the screws. So right now I'm just trying to trim off some of this extra tin foil that's gone up over the top. So I want to keep this top with this wood and the little bit of the uh, wired mesh. I just want to kind of have something else to incorporate some of the metal into the rest of the thing. So I'm going to keep the bottom. I'm not going to put any the um, tin foil and car corrugated cardboard on the bottom. I'm going to leave it like that. So I still have to do the inside of this lid, so I think I'm going to put the foil on the tin foil on the inside of this lid as well, but I haven't quite decided yet. So now this is almost dry. I'm just going to grab the add a chunk of um, sandpaper. Oh, there it is. I'm going to grab a chunk of the sandpaper. This should be dry, or I can just sand this off. I'm just going to grab the other chunk of sandpaper. That's the one that I wrecked my nail using. I'm just going to grab this other piece of sandpaper. I do have a sanding block. I don't know where it went. I was using it here. I was using it in the other room too. But I'm just going to sand this off. And it's not really coming off. I don't know if it's just, oh, there's the sanding block. Okay. Just got things stuck to it. I don't know, the Mod Podge might not be dry enough to sand it off, but just sand it in one direction. So I'm starting to sand it off. It's like when I do my other ones. You just sand it. You don't want, I mean, you could trim it because this paper is like you got the edge. So I mean, I could trim it. But I still have like a bit that it's still too high because I can trim to the edge, but then it's still just too high. So I want to um, have a nice finish. So I'm just going to. Use the sandpaper or the sanding block. I got a good grip on this one. And this is a very well used, worn out sanding block. So I'm just trying to find a chunk of it where it's got some stuff. The sanding block got wet. I was doing another craft and I was sanding wet stuff and then it got left. And so it's just falling all apart. But there's still enough sandpaper on here where I can do a few projects. There, we can just sand it. 
in one direction and it should start to come off in one nice chunk. See as you sand it then it's going to give you a really nice smooth finished edge. No tearing, no cutting. You're just going in one direction. You don't go back and forth. Like I mean, There's been a few times where I'll be on certain ones where I might just go back and forth a little bit like this. That's more or less just to sand it to get a different look to it. But for the most part, you just want to go one direction to get rid of the excess paper. You don't want to tear it. I'm just going to continue sanding all around. Block is sitting there too. Under a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, it's so much faster. A new sanding block. Paper is going both directions because it's just a corner. I'm just kind of sanding around these on the outside of these corners. It's a little sharp, so I'm just sanding that just a little bit. I can see where the wood is sticking up and you can almost get slivers from some of this cheap wood from the dollar store. And so sanding it is giving it a nicer antique-y kind of a look to it. It's kind of like worn out around the corners. I like that look. I'm not going to, I've seen other people who go one step further and they distress the stuff with black or brown ink. I'm not into that much detailing, aging stuff. But if you are, this would be the perfect time to do that. But I just like just sanding off some of the finish around the edges. You see this corner I haven't done versus the one I have done. I like that. See this one I've done a lot more. This is the one of those corners where this paper was really folded so the corner had to sand and I kind of sanded that corner down a little bit more versus the other one. So I'm going to keep just working on this and sanding this down. I'm just going to sand across here. This was just that makeshift stain using just the brown paint and water. So this had two coats around the sides and I just did one coat on the bottom. Because I really like the texture of the, the, the grain. You can see the grain. I just want to just, just round these corners off just a little bit. So it's 
not such a hard edge. just a little bit different because I don't want the same amount of wearing on every corner. Just I like it when stuff is a little bit different. Oh, sorry about that. I think I'm allergic to my own um, body spray. I put some on yesterday a little more than I normally put on. Or it could just be the when I bleached my hair. Sometimes, you know, for a few days after. I may not notice it right away, but a couple days after I do my hair, uh, I, it does bother me. The smell will get to me eventually. I don't know what it is. I'm sorry about that. I love the smell of my body spray. But I'm allergic to it. So I try not to spray it on myself. I spray it on my clothes. And then I get dressed. So I'm one of those people who I put my perfume on my clothes, shake the clothes out a few times, and then put the clothes on. So it's really, really fun when you're having an allergic reaction to your own perfume. <laughs> One thing I was trying to avoid, and it's trying to just, however, I moved the box when I was sanding, and I pushed the sandpaper into the box. So what I did was I just got some of the stuff, sanding stuff stuck, some of the paper pieces that I was taking out, I just pushed into the box. Didn't want that to happen. kind of out of the corners there it's so much better so there's what the inside of the box looks like the Mod Podge is still wet but I just sometimes you just want to get a project done so you kind of just you know uh, if I was gonna do this I would have I uh, used the blow dryer to dry it but I just wanted to hurry and get this part done with the sanding because the sanding doesn't really take any time so this is how the bottom and the inside is gonna stay uh, I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with around here yet. I've got a couple different options and things, so I'm just going to figure out what I like best before I say anything because I had a couple ideas. So now I've got this one too. I have to figure out so it's the insides. So whatever I do with the inside of this one, I'm going to use that for around here. So I've got a couple options. So there's what the box will look like so far. Now I'm going to have to age this tin foil part. So let's get moved. So I'll lay it back on the Mod Podge because I don't need that for a little bit longer. I'm just going to grab. Oops. Just gonna... Okay, I don't know what happened. My thing just stopped. I said, I'm just going to let this sit. I've put this all around the top and all four sides. I'm just going to set this aside and let it dry. I'm just going to let the other box, I'm going to grab the other box that I had been working on. So this is the one with the rust. So that's what it looks like after three coats. And there's the bottom of it. And there's the bottom. I'm not doing anything to this. I'm not going to sand this. I could, but I kind of like this one being rough. It looks like it's been really like weathered. So now I just decide what I want to do with the inside of this one. So I think for now, because I haven't quite decided what to do with the inside, I think I'm just going to take this rusty solution. I'm just going to paint 
the inside of these of this box with this rust solution. And all I can say is, watch this is this wood has nothing on it, and I'll just watch how fast it just takes this solution. And I'm just going to let it sit here on the bottom of the crate as much as I can get in to just sit here in the corners, just soak in. And when we're working with certain products with wood, you don't want the wood to get wet. Well, in this case, I want the wood to get wet. I want it to bubble. I want it to do whatever it wants to do. And this vinegar solution has got these little bubbles. And if you just keep the bubbles and you don't pop them, you get this really cool little bubbled effect from the bubbles. And I like that effect. So I kind of want like more bubbles, the better. And this is the one where this one's easy to do. I'm just going to leave this like this. I'm going to leave this for a few hours to dry. I'll probably come back and do a second coat in here of the rust solution. So my rust solution is um, a little bit of steel wool and it's the cleaning vinegar. Oops, a big chunk. So I wasn't going to use the sanding block, but I will take out big chunks of wood because I don't want to get cut or splintered and I wouldn't want anybody else to get cut or splintered either. But what I've decided for this one I'm going to do is I just want to do it this way and then I'm going to be using some strips of some faux leather and putting it on the these parts of so coming up around the lid like on the crate and I also have some little brads somewhere so I got to find my little tiny brads and I'm going to do that too to make it look like little nails. So I had done that on some of my other projects and it was really, really good. So I'm just going to let this dry for a little bit. I'm going to pour a couple, a couple times to do this. And I really just want to sit in, on, in different places so you get this really streaky pattern. Like when you take the liquid and you kind of move it back and forth, how it drips down. I want some of the really streaky patterns in here just so it looks like it's aging it and it's not going to be like an even finish. I don't want that. But um, yeah, so my cleaning stuff it was a steel wool and the cleaning vinegar. And then the other one I had the cleaning vinegar and I was trying to find rusty nails and I couldn't find any actual rusty nails, but I found a couple little screws. That were a little bit rusted and I found a binder hook that was rusted and I found this broken tool that was rusted and I'll say after three days of this tool sitting in the cleaning vinegar the rust is coming off and it actually starting to look new again but this is just an old tool it was supposed to be thrown out I don't know why it didn't get thrown out uh, making this stuff I was glad it got missed so it must have just broke in the summer when, or in the spring when I was doing my pruning of some of my plants out, out in my backyard. So I had a couple of these that broke, but they were left in the same bucket with the good ones. So it must have broke the last time I was doing some pruning and I just never got back to throwing it out. Yeah. I'm just going to. I'm just going to leave this, but I'm just doing a few more. If you see that, like I just come in like this and it's just kind of dripping down. I kind of like that way it drips. I'm going to do a few more drips on all these. I'm sorry about that. My camera just keeps turning off, so I'm not sure where it stopped when I was talking, but I just went, I did a second coat on this one. I've done two coats on here. You know two quick coats like I did the one and then I went through just a second one and this one I've done two coats so I said I'm gonna let these dry for about an hour or two so I'll come back in the meantime while I'm waiting for these to dry I'm gonna look for my little brads I had them a couple weeks ago 
Um, if I can't find them, I do have some tiny little picture finishing nails that I can use. And I just want to, these are still in here. So I'm going to dump these out as well because I think I'm finished with these. But this is this nice rusty water. I don't want to lose this, so I'm going to dump this into here and swirl this around the bottom. Let's see. So I got a lot of that rusty water. I'm going to take these little tools out. This is hard. I thought I had a pair of tweezers here. I know I did. I was using tweezers the other day for another something else I was doing. And it's so hard to grasp little things. Scissors, I don't know. I know I had tweezers. Let me see. Let's see what goes in this. No, I don't think I see the pair of tweezers in this little clown jar. Not kind of, I know it's an old one, but I thought it was kind of cute. I got it somewhere for like 99 cents at a local thrift store. And I thought, oh, it looked kind of cute in my craft room holding stuff. So I've just got it filled with little odd pieces of things. I know I had my tweezers in there the other day. Oh, there's the tweezers. So I can just pull the little screws out of this water so they can have some time to dry. Don't think I'm gonna be able to age these anymore in here, but I do have black ink. So I haven't decided if I'm going to use the black ink to distress them any further or not. I'll just kind of see how they look. make sure none of the hinges broke because that was the other thing I was kind of worried about having these soak for so many days that they're just gonna fall apart I didn't want them to fall apart so make sure I got all the, the screws here just gonna make sure how many I've got Line those screws up in pairs. Make sure I have an even number. Of course, they just are sticking to everything. to have two, four, 10, 11, 12, 18 screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Uh oh. That means there's still two more screws somewhere here in this water. Oh, there's one. I see there's still one more screw somewhere. I don't see it. Uh oh. I'm Stuck in one of the hinges still? No. Okay, so I have lost a little screw somewhere, so I'm gonna have to find that or just recount, make sure I've got. One, two, three, four, okay. I think I lost a little screw somewhere. Okay, I'll have to find it. I don't remember drop by well, drop one this morning and I picked it up right away. Yeah, I have lost one of the little screws. So it will be here somewhere, but now this is just too much water for in here. So I'm gonna pour it into the lid. That's as dark as I want it. I don't want it to sit and go any darker. 
I'm just gonna do the same thing, just gonna swirl this around. And I'm gonna pour this into this bucket here of the rust because I don't really want it to go too much darker. But I kind of like the little black bits that are in there. It's kind of neat. I'm gonna dump some of this out into that one. Just have it do some little drips. Just kind of swirl this water around. It's not water, it's the vinegar solution. Just kind of swirled around. I kind of like that. It's got such a different, darker color outside versus inside. Or I guess it's got a darker tone inside than outside, I should say. Now I'm just going to let this all dry for a few hours and I will be back to do the next part. Okay, so it's been a few hours, so these are now dry to the touch. I kind of liked when I poured it in and I was just going around. So some parts that are very light and some parts that are more dark. So I kind of like that effect in here. Kind of looks like something has spilt and leaked down. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of what I wanted. Just to kind of look kind of aged in different places and it's lighter and darker. And that's the bottom and those sides look like. And this is the top, so it's inside the crate. I kind of like when the little bubbles of the vinegar solution left the little bubbles on the surface. And this one I had dumped that the rust water in and I let it sit for about half an hour and let it just kind of dry. So I get this look in here. I don't know if I can find where it's a good angle, but it looks like it's um when you get that glue residue and it kind of just turns this yellow color. So it looks like it's old glue buildup inside there, which I kind of like that to look. I'm just going to move these, move this one out of the way with all the little hardware. So I did lose one of the little screws. I cannot find it, but I do have a jar with more little screws. So I'll worry about that later. I thought maybe I dropped it. I was moving things around here. Just checking in all the jars that are sitting here and I don't see it. I checked in case I threw it in the wrong container because I, I have done that before. But so here's the tiny little breads I have. I couldn't find these at first, but I did find my thing of thumbtacks. I'll just show the difference. Like I got some of these older thumbtacks which I couldn't find the breads and these, so I thought this would be okay. You can see the size of that versus where I want to put it on. So it'd be kind of like a, quite a big little uh, nail. That would, that would have been okay. But then I did find my little, little mini breads. Here, so I'll open this up so you can see the size difference hard to do this with these acrylics. So where is the um, tweezers? I'm just going to use the tweezers just so I can grasp it easier. So there's the little thread compared to the size. So I can actually fit two of these on here and it will look good. I've got a couple different finishes on the bread, so I'll have to go through and see how many I have how many I need and then what colors because I've got two maybe three different finishings on here so I have to decide which ones I want to use and then I was looking for my little bag or box or whatever of scrap material but I couldn't find it so I do have some full-size placemats so I'm just gonna see what the width is on these. I'm going to start with the one that goes on these, the top of the box. So it looks like it's about half an inch wide and then to cover the whole box, looks like I will need a strip about five inches. So I need a strip five inches long and about half an inch wide. So I'm going to cut two strips out. And make sure I get my pattern going the same direction. So five inches is there. Okay. 
and if I go from the 5 down to the 10, 10 inches is there. And then I need about half an inch, so Oops, I'm just gonna just trying to figure out what is the easiest way that I can mark this half an inch. So I know right where I need to cut. really just did not want to go and use a brand new placemat for this but it's probably used up all those little pieces that I had cut before for various product I've been doing so I made some of those um, doing those olive oil bottles and I was making them I was covering them with pieces of leather as well so I got my two strips this one looks a little thicker than that one, so I'm just gonna. What did I do? So I, I'm just gonna line the two up. I want them the same thickness. So if they end up being a little thinner, then that's okay. I just want them to be the same. better now they're the same size so if I grab this lid they should fit right on here one fits I'm just gonna check and make sure this one will fit it fits as well so that's good and I just have to even this strip up just a little bit I can see where it's gone a little crooked And you cut the little crooked part off. I'm just trying to even that there. And this one too. It just has this one little chunk that just there. There. Okay, so now I'm just going to grab I don't have any stronger glue. So I guess I'm just gonna use the Mod Podge, unless the glue gun is plugged in. Is the glue gun plugged in? Oh, my glue gun is plugged in. Oops. Okay, I guess I'm just going to hot glue gun these strips on. I will get some better glue in a few moments, but I just don't have any glue here at the moment, so. that my glue gun is actually plugged in. So I know I plugged it in earlier, but then I never got to the point where I needed it. So I thought I turned it off. I guess not. Oops. what it's going to look like. One side's done. I'm just going to get some of this extra excess glue that leaked out. Just get that off. And then glue the other one on. This one's just a little too long on this side, so I'm just going to trim the excess off just a little bit there. I'm just going to just going to trim them all. Now I've got them glued up in place, just anywhere where it kind of overhangs a little, so it won't interfere when I put the two pieces together. 
There we go. Got that done. Big chunk of glue right there. I'll have to clean that off in a minute. It's a little hard to get in there with the, the acrylics on. I do have this. Just use. use the screwdriver and just kind of pull this extra chunk of glue off. And then I realized I did this and I didn't put the brads in place, but that's okay. I haven't decided where they're going to go yet. Because usually when I did this before, I put the brads through, but because of how thin they are, I may just cut the back part off and just glue them on so that was my next thing but before I do that I'm just going to measure these four little strips that I need for here so I need it to be inches no, it says inch so one and a quarter inch by quarter inch here off because I think this would give me enough to do two. Enough to do two. Yep, that gives me enough to do two. So I'm just gonna use this here as a template to quickly make the other two. in half. too thick. Oops. No, they're too thick. I forgot to double check. I just went by the length. That's okay. That's the size I need. I just got to cut a little bit off of these. This one is the template, so I know how much I have to cut off because I forgot to measure the width. I was just trying to make four squares, or I guess this is rectangles. This one here, this piece here has fallen apart, so I'm just gonna throw these two strips of leather back together. It's going to be great. I'm just going to scrape this excess hot glue off here so it's not going to be, it won't be so thick. Now 
out, I will glue these pieces on because now they should be the right size. Yep. Trim off so that the again so that the tops are even with the top of the box. Now this looks like this on those four or those two sides. This big chunk of glue stuck to me and everything. See, when I put this on, I lined it up. These are all good. This one here has got a little bit too thick. Those ones are good. So just this one here, just a little bit too thick. I'm just going to get the scissors in there and just trim just a little bit off if I can. Now it's a little more even. It's, I don't mind if it's not perfectly even. I should have just cut one big strip and then cut it where those pieces needed to be cut, but I didn't think about that. I just wanted to cut my four strips. Even this back one here, it's just a little bit too thick on that one side. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and just trim that down. I was able to get the other one. Find my thinner scissors. Um, I don't know where they are. Oh, there they are. All these tiny little and little precision scissors. I can get into smaller places. It's all a little more even. Okay, so now for this one, I've got to, I like the way the inside of this one is. I'm not going to do anything to the inside, so now I'm just going to attach the hardware. I still got to do the brads too, but I figure that out. But I think I'm just going to attach the hardware first. So much easier with the tweezers.
and say even if I wasn't wearing crooks these are such tiny screws I don't have my glasses on so it also makes it really tricky to see the little tiny hole that I've got to put this screw into Well, I don't know how long this is going to take me to put this in. It's like almost like once I get them lined up, it's just so much easier just to almost have that one lined up. So I'll just get these ones screwed in. Just screwed in and it opens. It doesn't want to open very wide because I think the leather strips are just a little bit thick right back there. But it's okay. I don't need any reason why it's gonna why it will have to be opened. So I'm just gonna put the front ones on. I can get this up. These ones be a little bit easier. The screws are a little longer. So I'm just going to get four more screws to do, and I've got this one done.
So I got this one done. I really like the way it turned out. So I'm just going to set this one aside because it is done. I think I may have to, once it's dried, I'll probably have to cut a little bit of this leather around the hinge part just so if I wanted to be able to open it. But right now, I, I like the way it looks, so I'm just going to leave that for now. Let's go back to this one. This is this top part that I had kind of painted the tin foil with the vinegar rust solution. And it didn't really do anything, so I'm going to go back over. I'm going to grab that brown paint. So I'm just going to do a little bit of dry brushing with a bit of the brown paint. See if you can get, if you can see the bruise better. I think that will work so much better now. And I will wipe the excess paint off in just a few moments, but I just want to go over this. I just want to get rid of some of that shininess, but I like the texture of the coffee sleeve and the tin foil. over top of these hinges as well with this brown paint. Aside and let that dry. So that might actually be the look I was actually trying to get that I just I couldn't seem to get. So I'll just leave that aside. And I'll go back to the bottom part of the box where I'd done the inside. Now the outside looks like this. And now I think I'm just going to just flip this up. So, you know, the top of the box is going to be a little fancier than the bottom. So I think what I'm going to do is just take some of this tin foil. I think I'm just going to glue tin foil. I know I worked hard to get those edges all smoothed out, but I kind of like the textured tin foil. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I'm still debating that. I worked hard to get that all the bottom of this crate the way I like that. Because it looks perfect with the inside. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just... I'll do another project where I'll actually do the whole cover, the whole thing. But I'm just going to take some of this brown paint here. I'm just going to go this inside here, which I didn't get anything on it. Just brush a little bit, a little bit of dry brushing. Just so it's not so white on the inside here, so it kind of matches the paper. I know I had gone over it with just a little light coating before, but now it's not so bright white in the top edge. And I think I'm just going to A little bit of dry brushing just like that too. I've never actually done that on projects. I'm just curious how it would work. But on this one, I think I kind of like that on the corners.
like that look. Just changes it. Just doesn't go with anything else I've ever done. Which is kind of what I want to do. I want try just want to try some different techniques on wood and just see what I like. But I really like this this brown paint with this um, with the inside of this. So like I said, I have actually three actual metal trunks that I actually want to recover. And I just thought, well, if I play around with these smaller uh, wooden crates and find some patterns and designs that I kind of like, maybe I can do the real uh, tr metal trunks the same way as these wooden crate ones. But inside there, that really looks like a crate. Now I just thought of what I want to do with the inside. I just had this thought and I just remembered I found a chunk of lace today when I was actually looking for the leather. I was going to actually use it for another craft. But I was just looking at the top of the inside of here because I wanted to keep this mesh part. But I'm like, well what do I do inside here so I wouldn't have to try to measure and cut I think I'm going to line the inside with the chunk of lace. So just give me a few moments. I'm just going to let these pieces dry. Just got to touch up where I just kind of touched. Just move this metal on here, the tin foil. I just kind of brushed, just wiped some of that paint off there. So I just don't want it so like, I like it being kind of metallic, but not where it's like the um, super shiny. I'm just going to give that some time to dry. So I'm going to go down and grab that chunk of lace. But I know the lace is a very bright white, so I'm going to stain the lace. I know how to do that so easily. Who hasn't stained anything like lace? Lace stains so easily. So I'm just going to let that dry. I'm going to let this dry. And I will be back in just a few moments with the chunk of lace. So here's the chunk of lace, and I put it th just through here. I don't like it. Even if I were to stain it, I don't think I like the pattern on the lace. Then I also had found, I got some of this, um, it's all tangled here, a chunk of this gold iridescent um, mesh that I used at Christmas. I just put this chunk in here. I kind of like it, but then you can't really see the pattern. And I also had some burlap ribbon, so I just thought, well, what would happen if I put a chunk of burlap over top of the mesh? And then again, it's just the way that the burlap and the wire just kind of, you know, they don't look good. I mean, maybe if I had more of one, but that's just the way it's going to cover. It doesn't look like it's going to be good. Then I was just trying to side watch. I kind of like the idea of covering this. So what I might just end up doing is I think I've just got some more scrapbook paper here. And I like the idea of the inside of this to be the same as the inside of the bottom, but I want you to be able to see the mesh. And I've got this burlap paper. So this is the darker one. I do have a lighter one, so I think I'm gonna grab the lighter piece of this, like looks like a woven basket or burlap. No, I might actually just do the whole top in this one actually. Um, so I'm just gonna figure that one out. So I don't like the way the lace will look. So I'm gonna just go with the paper like I was initially gonna do anyways. So I think I'm just gonna grab the lighter color of that and I've got some more of this paper that I had cut. Not sure where that paper went because that was earlier this morning. So this one here I was just figuring out where the little 
where I want the little brads to go and how many of them. So I want one in the center here and in the center here. And I'm going to do two on the bottom. And then same with this one. I'm going to do one in the center here on each of the top back ones. And then so then I will need um, 12 little breads. And then I'm not going to put any on the top because I love that detail of just leaving that straight for now. So I guess I just got to figure out what 12, that I've got 12. So I've got them all here, but this is uh, still two colors worth. I still have to figure out um, if I have enough to do it. If I want to do it in the silver, I've got enough silver ones. So I put the silver ones in here, but it's these ones here. I've got gold and I've got copper. So I'm just got to sort them out still. So I will be back to finish to put the brads on here. I'll show you how to do that as soon as I figure out which 12 I need. First, I had to figure out how many I wanted. And I will get the scrapbook paper and cut and attach it to here. So I will just be back and just give me one more minute. Okay, I realized that I want to put the little brads on. I got to take the leather strip back off because it will not, I cannot get it the brass if we push through. So I am just taking my little scraper knife here and I'm just scraping and peeling those off. So I'm going to scrape some of this extra hot glue off as well. Just one of those things you're crafting and you're like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. And you're like, oh, it's okay. I'll try anyways. And no, there's no way I could attach the brads with the leather glued in place. Take some of this strip of hot glue off. Okay, got a lot of that glue off now. A little bit more on this front here. Now, I know right where I want the little brads to go. So I've got the holes already kind of punched through. I'm just going to take my little tool here. I'm just going to poke the hole through. I'm just taking my little baby screwdriver. I'm just going to punch the holes. No, I had made a hole on this one. I just can't see. Oh, there it is. Just smash the hole through and then slip the little brads through. hard to do. I am actually ready to take these acrylics off now. It's been a few days. But... So there. It's that one strip and then from the back you just open up the brad. If I can, I just gotta find some way to get, get something to go between there and there and just push it down. There. So I had these acrylics on. Today is Thursday. I did that Monday. So I'm almost ready to take the acrylics off. And up there. So it's the back and it's the front. So I'm just gonna actually I'll just do this one too and then I will and I will just glue these in place. I know when I did this before, I have another tool of my husband's that's actually sharper and it's so much faster to punch through because he has like a, I don't know what it's called. 
but it actually makes the punches faster. And I've used that a few times. Oh, look at that. So I was gonna ready to take my nails off. I just took one off. A couple have already kind of fallen off on me a few times this week. So I am really just ready to, tonight I think I will just soak my hands and remove the acrylics. It's fun to have, but it's just when it's certain lengths, ones are just a little longer than you know, what I'd like. Oh. Thought I punched that all the way through. Okay. I did. Then let's take make it through. use the glass table here to help open them all the way. Didn't quite work. There. So I've got them on. So now I will just grab the hot glue again and re glue them on this time. It's It'll be easier. Everything has been glued a couple times before now. Just gonna get this to go straight. Just went a little crooked. But there. I like that with the one little red on that side and the one on the back. So I'm gonna do the same to this one, just do a quick little bit of glue. And now I'll do the other ones. Oh, this is here. I'm going to see. Yeah, I got to trim some of this leather off. Not all of it. I see that that one is good. But it's just this side here. So if I can just trim a little bit of this leather off. Now it actually opens a little bit better than it did. So I've got some of this glue just stuck on the hinge now. So I'll just have to get that glue off and I'm just going to do the next couple. Just leave that for a second. I'll get to the glue in a minute. So I'm going to do these other ones. Same thing. Just figure out where I wanted the holes to be. Punch them through. So I will be back when I get these done. So I forgot this step on this one. I talked about it and then I kind of, you know, got ahead of myself. So I will be back when I get the brads put in and I'm glued on and when I get back, I will finish the other box with the um, scrapbook paper. Okay, I got 
got this one finished. I trimmed up between these hinges a little bit. So the box actually does open a little bit better than it did before. I'm just, I didn't have a big enough gap in the one. Now I've kind of cut it and I made too big of a gap. Then I've got some little bit of hot glue still in there. I got to just wait for it to dry a little bit and then I can just get in there with the X-Acto knife and kind of clean it up. And I got a little bit of glue right here I got to clean up, but for the most part, oops, that's, that one's done. I like the I really like the contrast of how that wood went with the vinegar and rust solution. I kind of aged the, the hinges up. And then the little brads already happen to be that a little bit of that um, aged copper or aged, not copper, aged uh, brassy color. So it all ties in, looks really good. I'm still thinking I might do something for the top. I'm not sure right yet. Um, so I was looking, do I want to add a few more of the brads up here? If I did, I would have to uh, change it out. Or I'd have to take this off again, and I don't want to take that off again. I'm just wondering if I can find my little thing. Oh, there it is, the thumbtacks. And just see how the thumbtacks would look. I think the thumbtacks might work up here. I'd have to hammer them in, so I'm not quite sure. I thought I had some smaller thumbtacks. A little bit older thumbtacks. They might look good. I'm not sure. I'll have to play around with that. But for now, I like how it is. I do have some other uh, like finishing nail things or other, other little sequence or something that I could maybe glue on here to give it that look of more nails but as of right now I think I'm just going to leave it as is and say this one is done so now I'm going to go back to doing so this bottom part it's done I'm going to leave it the way it is and I'm just going to go back to doing the top so I'm going to glue I'm going to do the bit of the Mod Podge some of the uh, scrapbook paper in here. So I found this one here. This is the lighter burlap weaving kind of a look. So I want to put that in. So I'm just going to quickly measure what size I would need. And then I'm just going to put the strips of it inside too, just to kind of give it a more finished look. So I'm going to show my inches. So I'm actually going to measure the inside because it's what I really want. So it looks like about Four, so a little more than four and a half by about three. So I'll do four and a half by three. Because it's just that the back of the paper is white and I just want to give something else for the top of there. I need to go to the three. The three is to there. Making sure I'm not cutting anything else but the one piece of paper. Size. So when I put this down in here, and I get that at the top, I like that. And then right now it's going to look like that, but I still have to go in and put the other paper over top. I know I didn't quite cut it quite straight, so I'm just going to even this up just a little bit. I do have an actual paper slicer. I'm not quite sure where it is, but it makes it so much easier when cutting for paper crafts. I found one, but I'm missing the little missing the little thing that holds it in place when you're cutting. So the paper doesn't want to stay down. So that's why I'm not using it tonight. That's what I want, just so the top of that. Because otherwise, if I put the scrapbook paper in, I need this to pop back out.
notice if I put the scrapbook paper in the one I want, then I'm going to get this bright white, and that's not what I want. I want the finished to look kind of aged. I can't get this to come back out. There. And then I'm just going to cut a piece of this the same size. here. So I'm just going to piece it together just so we get the world map inside. Yeah. So I'm just going to get the Mod Podge. Um, where do I put it? Oh, here it is. And some glue down in here. And I forgot to rinse my brush earlier. Brush is all just hard and stiff, so that's not going to work. I just got to grab another brush. Just grab another brush. And I'll make sure I go and wash out the brushes this time. It happens. You're crafting, and then you have to stop to do something else. And then you come back, and he's like, oh, shoot, I forgot to do that. Pop this in here. And I've got the chopstick still on my desk from making those legs for my Valentine little gnomes. I'm just going to put a layer of Mod Podge on top just to help seal it in. this at the top and in the inside it looks like that. Now I'm just going to cut spin strips and just line the inside. going to now line the inside with thin strips and then let that dry and then I will come back when I get this all done and it's dried you'll be able to see what they the two look like
I will be back when I get this all finished, but there's what it looks like so far. And I know I cut this page a little crooked, so I do have a little gap up here, but that's okay. I'm just gonna put another little piece of it over top and it's Mod Podge and it's, does eh, sometimes it doesn't matter if it's overlapped. Like in here, I had some overlapping pieces just cause I cut some of mine wrong and you can't really tell cause the pattern is just so busy, it's a map. And so when you fold a map, sometimes you're going to get where it overlaps a little bit. So, so I will be back when I've got this done and assembled. And you can see what the final, uh, what they both finally look like. Okay, I'm back. I've got these. So I've already got this one done. Um, I showed my husband them last night. He liked the outside of this one and then he liked the the inside of this one so now I'm just I'm just wondering if I should put some of the Mod Podge some of that paper inside this one but I really love the color that this went and it's got these little brown specks I don't know how good they're coming up but it looks really aged I just I really like that and then they've got like the drip so it looks like you know whatever was coming into the crate had dripped down and puddled up inside I just I, don't know, I just kind of like the way this looks I don't want to wreck that finish although I might get a second one of these crates and do the outside like this and the inside like this one so this one I got the hinges on I'm still missing the one screw I can't find it we've got little picture hanger screws in the garage I just just haven't had time to go looking for them so I did put two coats of Mod Podge around on this foil and there's a few places where the foil just has lifted up like that and I'm kind of left it I was gonna glue it back down but I said no that's an interesting detail when stuff gets old so when it's closed, you get this little bubbly effect here. Where it's kind of lifting up. I kind of like that little detail. It's hard to make that detail, but it just kind of happened on its own. And then going over this with the, um, after I'd sanded it and I got that white stuff, and then going over top of it in a few places with the rust water solution or rusty vinegar solution, I guess, it kind of darkened up a few places and I like how it looks. I like how the hinges really got rusted. Now on this one, if you notice, I put one of the, I think this is the one, this is the one. One of them I put the hinges on wrong. Let's see. Yeah, it is this one. This one here, I put the hinge on backwards. But you don't even notice it. It's just one of those little details that, because from the inside, they look the same. So I don't know how that hinge was different. Maybe the hinge was already different. Because <laughs> I'm looking at the hinges, they all look the same, except just that one hinge. So maybe it was already like that from the store. Maybe it's backwards. I don't know. I honestly I cannot tell but it's a hinge is a little different on this one which I thought was okay because you're trying to make it look old and so it's missing a screw and the hint this missing a screw and the hinge is two different hinges which I guess would kind of you know like if it's antique or old you just kind of replace it with other pieces so it's still usable same with in this this is the one with the down here when I had cut the pieces to fit for the map, there was a few spots where I got where I cut a little too short. And I just had to piece together, I'm trying to find it right up here. So I had to piece together another chunk over top of where there was a gap. And I kind of like the way it's overlapped because you can tell that it's it looks old and then it looks like, oh, you had to repair it, which old stuff if it gets used constantly like this would be would have to get repaired even down here when I did this bottom one this bottom one had a chunk that was a little bit too tall at the back so it lifted up so it looks like it's been repaired just kind of adds to the look of making something look old by having it kind of pieced together and then there's just different parts where I purposely let it bubble 
and I purposely, with the paintbrush and the Mod Podge, actually try to get the little pockets, like the little wrinkles in there, kind of crease, and I was actually trying to make more of them, because as it ages, it kind of, you know, the, it's going to do things, you know, moisture and dampness and stuff is going to wreck the finishing of things, so I wanted that. Now, I'm not sure if I really like this detail around the top, this tin foil. It was an interesting idea to try. So it's got two coats of the Mod Podge just to prevent it from coming off. But I'm not quite sure if I really like that detail. But then I do like the top of this. Having that other um, wicker or woven material um, page of scrapbook paper underneath. Because the wire does have, you know, like some dimension to it, so it's not solid, it's going to be straight white. So you can tell that the, some parts of the wire are still really white. That's noticeable, but other parts have looked like they have been aged or somebody's tried to clean it over the years. So it's got a really interesting look. But again, because it was a little bit, a little rusted, it's hard to open and close. These. So I'm going to, for these ones, I'm just going to put my rings in here. I've got some big, heavy, chunky rings that don't fit in my standard jewelry box. So I'm just going to put these, stack them up on my, I think like that. I haven't quite decided how I want to stack them. I think I like to stack them like this on my dresser. And just put some of my big, heavy, chunky rings. Like, I've got one ring that you put on, and it looks like three rings because it covers two of your fingers. And so that doesn't fit in my normal little jewelry box. So I'm going to use these for rings. Okay, well, with that being said, it's already taken me all week to get these done. It's Friday. I started making the rust solution way back on Monday. So I've been just been piecing these together just a little bit here and there. But just see, I can't believe I'm finally finished making them. He said my husband, he loved the outside of this one and the inside of this one. So I think I'm going to make, I said, I'll go back to the dollar store and see if they have any more of these crates. I bought these from Dollarama. They were $1.50 each. I know Dollar Tree sells them too, but they're, sometimes they're harder to find at certain times. But I was able to find two different styles just so I could have two different ways of playing around with different colors and aging things. So I just want to, again, just want to say uh, thank you to everybody who's subscribing and watching my videos. And I will see everybody in my next videos. Bye.